Hey everybody, welcome to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. I'm Mike Catalana. Thanks for being with us on this weekend. Uh, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Ed Oliver, the big news today, right? The Bills signing their defensive tackle to a deal four years, $45 million guaranteed. Obviously, he can make more than that. This is really interesting with Brandon Bean because you weren't sure exactly how he was going to handle this with Oliver. I don't think they love the money on that fifth-year option. It really gives them issues with the cap, right? Well, obviously they wanted to sign him because they just gave him a big deal. So take that out of the picture. The question was, could they come to terms on a deal? When you get that fifth year option and he was drafted ninth overall, uh, it's 10 million plus, almost $11 million directly against the cap for this year. And so now they get to rework those numbers again. Again, as we've talked about many times, the salary cap is about accounting. They want to get Ed Oliver signed. They get it done. Now they control how that contract works and what fits for them. Sure, they're giving them a lot of money. And Terry and Kim Pagula got to write a big old check. That's the way it works in the NFL. So they signed Ed Oliver. And he's an interesting guy. We had talked on this channel with uh, Jenna, Dan, and myself about what their thoughts would be and the difference between Ed Oliver and Tremaine Edmonds. And of course, Dan thought I was giving him a hard time when I was talking about Ed and his role and maybe they were going to just look to see and how he played and maybe he'd play his way out of it. And he was thinking, of course, that we were talking the same kind of thing we talked about Tremaine Edmonds. Here's the major difference. It's the position they play. Look, the Bills value that position, I think, more than they value linebacker like most teams in the league. And they obviously see enough in Ed Oliver to give him that big second contract. When they drafted him, undersized guy. I remember we were down there talking to him in Nashville before he was picked. And it, it was one of the first guys that I heard be so positive about the facilities in Buffalo, all the workout space, the rehab center. And for a guy who's covered this team back when they were great in the 80s and 90s, they did not have those facilities then. I mean, Buffalo, everybody would make fun of Buffalo about being cold. They also had lousy facilities, lousy practice areas. They didn't have all the things that they eventually came to. So I remember being, I think Jenna was with me down there, being a little struck by, wow, this is almost like a recruiting thing for the Bills. Now, granted, the player's being drafted, but he was talking about this before the Bills even picked him. Loved being there. Loved what they had. So they end up picking him. Undersized guy. And I remember talking to him that night about coming to Buffalo. Obviously, he was very excited. Physically, size-wise, he's an Aaron Donald type. And the reason I bring that up is because he's undersized for his position. Now, nobody's saying he's Aaron Donald. He's not Aaron Donald. No one is Aaron Donald. But they like the way he plays. It can be frustrating at times. Not in the same way with Tremaine Edmonds in terms of making big plays. Those kind of D tackles are not big play guys. They are wreak havoc on the inside, make plays in the run game, pressure the quarterback players, right? They're not, he did have Thanksgiving. He loved Thanksgiving. Remember that big game he had in Dallas and he did it again this past year in Detroit, but it's been a really good player for them. The question was, did they think he was good enough to give him this kind of deal? Obviously, the answer is yes. And you know who played a big role in this. Obviously, he's the head coach, is Sean McDermott. He's running the defense. And you got to think about strength up the middle. You got Poyer and Hyde behind you. You got Ed Oliver in the middle on the defensive line, certainly in that one of those tackle spots. And, you know, the middle linebacker position is up in the air. But they wanted to keep Oliver. The money is right in line. It's what guys in his position get, right? You're paying him a lot, but you're thinking to yourself, he's what we need. Now, they did look at D-tackle, I think, in this year's draft. I don't think there was any type of player, you know, outside of maybe Jalen Carter, who there was no way they were going to get him, that I thought that, unless he slipped a lot, that they thought they would have had a shot at. Maybe if they made a play on somebody or, you know, traded up to get a D-tackle, maybe they would have thought differently. But I think what they're looking at with Ed Oliver is one of those core guys, right? Draft, develop, and re-sign. And that's what they've done. I don't have any problem with it. I like Ed Oliver as a player. I always want more. He's top 10 pick. Jenna brings that up all the time. You know, when you're drafted number nine, a lot is expected of you. Um, the question is, are they going to get more out of Ed now that he's gotten paid? I think he's been a good teammate, a good player. He's been pretty, pretty healthy. He's had some issues. Uh, but I think he's been a good player for them. 
but you know this is this is where teams tell you what they really think you know when they write that big check and they think he's a core guy and they think the position is that important so oliver gets the deal now honestly we'll see how it all stretches out with the cap and the way they maneuver it but i don't think this impacts anything else they might want to do in fact i bet you the cap number on ed is lower than it would have been with him on the one-year deal for the fifth year option it's just the way teams operate they can maneuver the cap it is accounting and brandon bean keeps this tight to the vest i mean i didn't hear anything about it i don't think anybody who covers the team other than we were waiting, you know, anytime that guy's in that fifth year, you think maybe they can come up with a long-term agreement, you know, and it helps obviously both sides. Um, it takes the pressure off to draft somebody at his position next year. Not that they won't go for interior D-line, but it takes some of that pressure off. So he's been a popular guy amongst his teammates. He's been a good player. I think they still hope he can become a great player. And I think they're paying him for that. Um, so let's see what Sean McDermott can do with this defense and getting Ed Oliver back. Think about this. You know, you could have gone forward next year if you decided to let Ed walk without Tremaine Edmonds in the middle, without Ed Oliver. Doesn't look good for the franchise. Two high draft picks, two first rounders that would not have gotten a second year deal. Um, and of course they could have signed Tremaine, but like I said, I don't think they value the position enough to give them that kind of money. So Oliver gets paid. Um, are they still in the business of finding other help? Yeah, I think they still are. Could it be DeAndre Hopkins? You know, I have a video on here. You can check it out. I would love to see him make a move. I don't think Hopkins is going to get the money that a lot of people think he does, that he wants, uh, unless it's Houston. And I still have no idea why a team like Houston would sign him now. I know he's a former Texan, but makes no sense to me. But let's see if anything comes of that. But I think Brandon Bean is spending a lot of Terry Pagula's money right now, and I think he's opening up cap space for himself this year to make some other kind of move. We'll see what it is. But I think if you're a Bills fan, you're happy the guy's under contract. Do you think he can play better? Absolutely. Um, will a change in defense help him? Maybe. Maybe a more aggressive thing. Certainly, uh, I think coaches on this defense have been happy with Ed. You remember back in his rookie year where he was playing and all of a sudden he wasn't. And they were sending a message to him. And I think they obviously saw enough to come up with the big check and the big money. So uh, I want to know what you think. Let me know. I mean, when it's a guy on your team and he signs a big deal, I think most people are pretty happy because they're used to Ed playing there. He's been a good player for them and he's been effective. But now you are talking about making him one of those core guys once you sign that second deal it's what all the players are looking for even the guys drafted high get that second deal that's when you really got paid you know he's going to be riding a horse somewhere you know he's going to be celebrating on his one of his you know four wheelers that's the kind of guy he is uh upbeat guy positive guy and now he's a guy with a lot of money in his pocket so this will be interesting to see how it plays out with them on the D-line. Uh, without Von Miller, it looks like early. Guys like Ed and on the outside, Greg Rousseau, maybe the Boogie Bashams of the world, AJ Epinesa, all those guys all need to step up. But, hey, you show your respect in the paycheck. That's the way it works in the NFL. And the Bills showed their respect to Ed Oliver on Saturday. Again, $45 million guaranteed. Good for Ed. And we'll see, again, what Sean McDermott, now as the coordinator, can do with this defense. All right, just something quick. Just, uh, again, I want to know what your comments are, what you think about the deal. Just let me know. Leave it in the comments here. And uh, we'll all be back with a podcast coming up next week. So for our team, Jenna Cottrell and Dan Fates, I'm Mike Catalano. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Buffalo Plus.